Hello guys, this is Roberto from Developer. This is the video that goes with the article When You Don't Get It, Simulated, publicated in Bill Electronics Circuits. Uh, before starting, I just want to say a big thank you to Bill Electronic Circuits and to Oivin for allowing me to uh, post this uh, article in his website. So, what we're going to talk about this video. In the article, I explain the importance of uh, simulating a circuit when you don't understand it. You know, sometimes you get a circuit from a website, from a textbook, or even yourself, you design a circuit, but there are some parts that you don't quite get. So by simulating it, you have the freedom of probing every wire and every component without actually building up the circuit, which is very important at the beginning because it saves you time and it also allows you to understand the circuit better. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, how can you understand your circuit using a simulation tool in this time LT Spice. Okay? So you can get LT Spice for free. There's a link in the article. Um yeah, let's get started and get our hands dirty. Okay guys, so as you can see here in the screen, this is LT Spice. This is the circuit diagram that is part of the article. And this is what we're gonna analyze today and find out what it actually does and how it works. Right, so let's start with step one, and I'm gonna write them down over here so you can remember them. Step one, think in terms of I-O. There you go. Okay, so what do I mean with think in terms of I-O? Uh, most analog functions, they take an a input signal do signal processing analog and then they they have an output right so it's very useful to things in to think in terms of having an input and then after some processing you have a, a desired output so in our analysis of how the circuit works we have here at the right an input which is a current source and then to the, sorry, to the left, the input current source, and then to the right, a LED as output. So in order to find out what this circuit does, we're going to play with the input parameters and see how the output reacts. So first thing, we're going to try zero amps and see how the circuit behaves. We simulate it. and we probe. This is our input parameter, zero amps. And then because we cannot actually, the, the physical parameter we are actually interested in here is light, but because we cannot see light on the simulation, then we're just going to probe for current because we know if there's current flowing on the LED, then it, it's on. So we probe our current and we see that there is no current. So no current in the input, no current in the output. Easy. We try 5 milliamps. Simulate again. Still the same thing. No, no change. Let's try 50 milliamps. Simulate again. And now we can see there is actually a current at the output. We see here that it's 31 milliamps flowing through the LED, so we can say that the LED is on. We've just noticed that after a certain threshold of current in the input, there is a current in the output is enabled, so the LED is turned on. So now let's try to find what that current is the value of that current. We turn this down to 10 milliamps, see if it changes. Uh, no, uh, still turn on. So maybe let's go a bit more granular and do 1 milliamp steps instead of 5 milliamps. We go to 9, simulate. 
and then we can see that the current in D1 is zero amperes. Therefore, we um, find out that if we have an input higher than 10 milliamps, then our LED D1 turns on. So with this easy analysis, we've already found out the function of the circuit. So the function of the circuit is to turn on an LED when the input current is higher than 10 milliamps. We can write down that as a logical function. So if I1 is uh, bigger than 10 milliamps, then the uh, LED is on. So that's the function of a circuit. Now, we want to uh, learn or find out how this circuit actually works. So for that, we go into step two. We add another label, say step two, is to divide the circuit in stages. So what do I mean with that? My step two. Okay. What do I mean with that? So yeah, analog functions, as I said at the beginning, they they do a conversion, switching, filtering, or amplifying, attenuating of an a analog signal. So there are certain circuit elements, such as the operational amplifier or the transistors, in this case, which actually do that. They do switching, they do amplifying. So we're going to use that basis as our categorizing of circuit stages. Just going to write it here as like examples, conversion, switching, filtering, amplifying or attenuating. This is not like all the um, um, categories you can find on an analog circuit, of course, there's much more. Okay, so according to this, we'll draw some squares to divide the functions. So this will be the first one. This is a conversion of current into voltage by this uh, operational amplifier here. Then Q1 is doing some switching. So we'll draw another square here. And then finally Q2 is doing the final switching to turn the LED on. So we're just gonna draw another box around it. Okay. So let's analyze the the first stage. So after you're doing this, doing that, step three is simply analyze each stage. Okay, so we start from the left. In here, we have a resistor in parallel with the positive input of this operational amplifier. amplifier. And on the negative input, we have a reference voltage, which in this case is 2.5. So let's probe this a little bit to see if we understand better. Okay, so for nine milliamps, the voltage drop at this resistor R1 is 2.25 volts. And we've seen that the reference is 2.5 volts. If we increase uh, the input current to 10 milliamps, because of Ohm's law, we know that if we have more current flowing through this resistor, then there'll be a higher voltage drop. So we simulate that. Um, we can see that the voltage drop at R1 is pretty much the same as the voltage reference at the negative input. So we just found out that when the uh, positive uh, input of the of an operational amplifier is the same as as the negative, then 
um, the output triggers. This is not actually an operational amplifier. This is a comparator circuit. It's a very popular circuit used to trigger um, uh, analog signals according to a specified level. So if you're designing a different circuit and you want a signal to have a digital response, so sort of like on a high or low, depending on, on what it's been fed, um, this is a very useful way to do it. So with analyze the first stage of a circuit, that is that when there is more than 10 milliamps, uh, this triggers and it changes state. So following to the next stage, we can see that when U1 triggers, then the, the voltage, the base transistor is about 800 millivolts. While if there was no current here, we have a voltage of 80 millivolts, which is not high enough to turn on Q1 and make it conduct. So as we can see, when we have a current higher than, that causes a voltage drop in R1 higher than the voltage reference value, then we, we get another voltage uh, for Q1 base that it's high enough to make it conduct. And when Q1 conducts, then we're changing the state of transistor Q2, which is a PNP, which is the opposite as Q1, that it is an NPN. So Q1 conducts when the, when the voltage at the base is low or close to zero, while Q2 con, uh, conducts when, sorry, Q1 conducts when the voltage is high and Q2 conducts when the voltage at the base is low. So by activating Q1, then the voltage at this point in the base of Q2 is dropping. Therefore, uh, Q2 is conducting and current is flowing through R6. And that's the explanation of how this circuit works. Um, I know it's, it's a bit uh, hard to understand, but you can download this circuit and you can play around with it until you get it. Um, well, hopefully you find this information useful and you can start simulating your own circuits. And this way you will be able to understand so much more without having to build the electronic circuit, which at the end you have to do because this is simulation and it's not 100% real. So this is very, very useful for preliminary stages to validate your circuit idea, but you still have to build up your circuit afterwards and try it in real life. So thanks for watching. Thanks again to Oivin and Build Electronic Circuits for letting me post this information in, in your website. Um, until the next time, bye.